Tracking real aircraft with the key croc and a software defined radio, this time on Hack 5. Hey everyone, Glitch here, and welcome back to Hack 5. In our last video, we talked about using a key croc with a software defined radio dongle to do just about anything you can do with a software defined radio. We set up a, an SDR server so that you could stream all of your SDR packets over the internet, or at least over your local network. You all wanted to see more software defined radio content, and you were particularly interested in other uses of the key croc in software defined radio. So, I wanted to bring this to you today. We're going to be talking about using a software defined radio to pick up ADSB or automatic. Automatic Dependent Surveillance Broadcast Beacons, or just another horribly butchered acronym probably dreamed up by DARPA. And this is a system that has been used in the US and other countries around the world for quite some time now. It is basically the gold standard for tracking aircraft without radar. A lot of general aviation and commercial aircraft these days have a little radio on them that's constantly beaconing out information, these ADSB packets, with things like their location, their altitude, their speed, and other important factors about their flight that normally you could get from radar, but that can be received by cheap little radio dongles and radio stations all over the US. This is a lot more cost effective and in some cases even more reliable and accurate than normal radar stations that are looking for pings back. And it can also even be tracked from space, not that the satellites are really doing their thing yet. Now the interesting and slightly terrifying thing about this is these packets are transmitted in the clear, so anyone can receive them. That's a great thing for amateur flight trackers and people who are just curious at what's overhead. But this also means that there's no authorization to any kind of central system to say whether or not that plane actually exists. If you can see where I'm going, that's a pretty scary concept. But we're not going to talk about that today. We're just going to talk about how to receive those packets so that you can track the aircraft flying overhead. Now, I don't have a great antenna for this, and I'm in a pretty crazy RF environment. So the results you're going to see from my tests aren't nece necessarily indicative of what you'll get in your tests. If you're in a rural area with nothing but flat planes around and you've got a fairly decent antenna you cobbled together, odds are you'll get much better results than I am. Now without further ado, let's get into it. What you're going to need is a key croc with the latest firmware flashed on it at the time of this video, that is 1.3 underscore 510. You should have already gone into your config file in army mode and put in your Wi-Fi SSID and enable SSH for good measure, you might need it later. However, we're doing the same thing we did in the last video where we have a payload file that you can drop on that'll be linked in a GitHub repo down below. That will just get dropped into the payloads folder. You'll type in one string of text and it will install everything and set up the server automatically. You'll of course also need a software defined radio. I'm using an RTL SDR V3 with the little antenna kit. Like I said, this isn't the greatest antenna, but it'll get the job done and you'll receive some stuff. You'll of course also need a USB keyboard. This is important for users of Bluetooth keyboards because you'll still need to be able to type in the string through the key croc that will initiate the install process. After that, you'll end up with an SDR server that you can plug into a battery bank or anything and it doesn't even need to be connected to your computer. So you can set it out on the back porch for better reception or what have you. So let's dig into the setup and then we'll talk about the code. Like I said, you should have the key croc set up on Wi-Fi and connected in Armin mode to your computer. You'll take the ADSB installer.txt, drag that into your payload folder. I already have it in there, but I'll replace it anyway. And that's it. You eject that and then you wait for it to be safely ejected. Unplug it, plug it back in, plug in your USB keyboard. Wait for the crack to have booted, open up a notepad file, just so that you can see the output from the installer. The light is off, so I can go through and on my USB keyboard, install dump 1090, and it will begin installing the prerequisites. Uh, this is a SDR library, as well as something needed for making the dump 1090 repo. This will also be running apt-get update, and so it will take a little bit depending on your internet connection. That took about 45 seconds. Now it's cloning and making the repo. It looks like I need to add an extra quack enter there to uh, make that on two separate lines. This is just going to get the dump 1090 repo, and that's going to dump it into opt dump 1090, and then it will run the make command. Uh, it will then create a systemd service file, enable the service so that it can come up on boot automatically, and then it is done. So now if you unplug your USB keyboard, 
plug in a software defined radio. I'm not even going to unplug the key crock. It should do this without issue. Now you'll want to open a browser window and navigate to the crocks IP address. In this case, one point, or 192.168.211 and then colon 8080. And it will start us off in Canal de Sicilia somewhere. This is just the default 00, zero lat latitude longitude that gets set. You can go into the config files and have this automatically start where you want in the world. But in our case, we're just going to zoom out and zoom in somewhere over here without getting too specific. Now, like I said, I'm in an RF hell zone, and but if I take this out onto the back porch, I do see planes. And that's it. This web UI is actually being hosted by the key croc, so it's a completely self-contained system. Now, the cool thing is you can expand on this, and this data can be piped into various systems like uh, OpenSky or FlightAware or just about any other uh, flight tracking service so that you can contribute to a map of the world's aircraft or you can use it to alert you when you see certain military aircraft overhead. Speaking of military aircraft in the US, generally speaking, are required to have their transponders on unless they're doing something mission critical. But however, they're on like Flight Radar 24, they have a deal with the military and with the US government to not show those aircraft. However, they will still show up on your own system, which is fascinating, at least I think so. All right, now let's have a look at the payload file so that you can see how it all goes together. So this looks like a long text file, but it's actually not all that bad. Uh, a lot of it is just the formatting to set up error messages and whatnot. At the top, we have the title description, and then down here we have match install dump 1090. That's looking for us typing in the install dump 1090 text. LED setup will turn the LED on the key crock magenta so that you know it's in setup mode. Quack enter will put a new line in, installing prerequisites, apt update, apt install, and it's installing the SDR and SDR dev packages as well as package config. It will quack string success if it's succeeded. It'll quack string fail if you aren't connected to the internet, for example, or the servers aren't reachable. It will then quack string cloning and making repo, and then it will start a git clone. Now, I did have this fail on one occasion where after I did a factory reset, the NTP server didn't sync up and it didn't know what time it is. So SSL fa uh, failed to verify and it did not actually do the thing. Uh, you could go in over SSH and set up a, uh, or you could run the NTP sync manually. However, I did find that if you don't want to go into SSH, you can just reflash the firmware and it fixes it. Uh, it will then change directory into the dump1090 folder. It will run the make command. Uh, it will then see if the dump1090 file is found. If so, that will say it succeeded because if you found the file, it means the make finished successfully. It will then move on to creating the service file and that will just go into systemd, create a adsb.service with the ADSB server name. It will run this command here, which is going to put the dump 1090 service into interactive and net enabled mode and it will ping it or scan it aggressively. So you'll be getting packets as often as possible. It sets the working directory to dump 1090, which is important because the gmap.html folder where all of the map data is stored does not actually get mapped to the directory it's in. So you have to set your working directory manually because it's hard coded in the dump 1090 service. Uh, after that, it will quack string enable service, start the ADSB service, enable it to run on boot, and then it'll quack string done. And if something went wrong at the command up here, if that folder or file was not found, it will say git clone make failed. And that's it. It will set the LED to finish to let you know it's done. And that's Keycrock with software defined radio ADSB goodness. It just works because I spent several hours working on this again, debugging weird edge cases. There's a couple more prompts I could put in for error message checking, but generally the only two failures you're going to see are the, if you're not connected to the internet or if SSL fails to, fails to verify and the git clone fails. So. Other than that, that's all there is to it. Like I said, you could integrate this data with other flight services, and we can dig more into that in the future if you'd like to see that. 
comment down below. Let me uh, know what you think you would change, how you think it could be done better. Uh, if you use this, send pictures to me over at Glitch Tech on Twitter. And that's about it for you. Thank you all for watching. Glitch out. Thanks for supporting Hack5. Find all our shows, community, and Pentest products at hack5.org.